I meet the coolest people. And everybody has a story, and I'm kind of nosy, so I'll ask. Call me when you can be gay, Adam. I don't like straight Adam. He's he's an asshole. We, uh, we hit coming out issues, we hit family issues, and those are always a little, you know, serious. We don't have tests. We do work. We're not here. Yeah. I feel like everybody should be represented. That's what I'm here to do. Hi there, welcome to Happy Hour. I'm Cameron Steele and we are back at the lookout on a beautiful San Francisco day. And it's actually Fleet Week, so we got our hot military men in town all over the place, flying overhead. Speaking of hot military men, we have two to introduce you to today, good friends of the show, Adam Goldsbury and Jarrett Mefford. Before we bring them on though, I want to have a little talk about a recent controversy that started here in the Bay Area between Facebook and some local drag queens. Uh, you may have heard a little something about the real name policy, but it's winding down now and it's all good. But I do want to have a little talk with Mark and Saturn about that. So come and have a drink with us and learn a little bit about what happened between Facebook, our queens, and the real name policy. Okay, so we're back at the round table. Well, they're not really round, but whatever. <laughs> back at the round table with Mark and Saturn. Thank you for joining me hey, today. Cheers to all of you. Cheers, cheers, cheers to yes, the two of you. Cheers yes, to you cheers as to well. Yeah. So we're here to talk about uh, the real name policy and Facebook and our wonderful drag queens who went to fight yep. for um, being able to use alternative names on Facebook. So let me give you a quick synopsis of what happened. So it seemed like Facebook all of a sudden decided to enforce a policy <laughs> that actually had been there all along, which I wasn't really aware of, but yes, um, to try to force people to use their, basically their driver's license, birth gi given names, uh, rather than personality names, performer names, chosen names, which so many people actually right. do use. Yeah. You yep. use or tried to use yeah. your Saturn. I tried to, and they wouldn't let me. I, I joined right. Facebook uh, just for music. Years and ago. Years ago, and yeah. they would not let me use Saturn. I had to right. use my real name. And matter of fact, back then, people only knew me as Saturn. Yes. <laughs> I won't announce it here. And but that yes. was going back to when Facebook sort of started <coughs> beginning to get momentum? I mean, this, was, this was about six years ago so I was, that policy I has been yeah. in place it's right. been in place so it has been in place but right. so many people were yeah. using their chosen yeah. names their performer names and it's not just because of promotion but just because yeah. that's how they go yeah. I don't call you mm -hmm. by your driver's license name I right. call you Saturn and Sister Roma is uh, the most famous I think example of that People don't call her Michael. People call her Sister Roma. So um, it seemed like Facebook was going after these people to try to force them into using those yeah. names. Yeah. Yeah. Just very suddenly, very out of the blue, and it felt very violating and exposing to so many of us. Yeah. But um, the behind the scenes is the even scarier part to me is why. And yeah. I think it was because of a person or persons doing reporting, yeah. like literally digging into accounts and finding those drag queens, if that's the most obvious yeah. um, ones to find, finding the drag queens and reporting them to Facebook, yeah. and Facebook not handling it very well. Yeah. Their security team would just close down the accounts. Yeah. And then you had a couple of weeks to fix yeah. it, and that, or you could just not have that account anymore. Yeah. And then that person, person bragged about it on Secret, and, <laughs> on, and then opened a Twitter account called The Real Name Police, and started uh, blasting out every drag queen performer or whatever on Facebook and giving a link to how to report. Yeah, you know what struck me about the whole thing? Less about, for me personally, less about the sort of injustice of what policy they were seeking mm -hmm. to enforce was really right. how people sort of stood up for what they believed in. Yes. yes. Right? And that seeing was all, of the, all yeah. of the activism, right? I mean, Sister Roma has been known for activism yes. already. For years, um, but it was it was beautiful the it way people beautiful. came together. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I mean you don't you don't drag queens. That's the message. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is very true. The the my name is movement. Well, and like we talk about all the time on the show, uh, the ability of an individual or a small group of people oh, yeah. to make a difference, yes. well, and how powerful that can be. So. Yeah. Cheers Fantastic. to that. Yeah. Cheers Absolutely. to you. Yeah. Cheers to Amen. Sister Roma Sister and Roma. everybody else involved, our local politicians, and Fantastic. Amen. So, my name is. <laughs> My name is. So now it's time to bring on our military boys. I was actually raised by hippies, so I don't know a lot about the military. However, um, back when I was about 19, 20, I did marry an army man for a very short amount of time. 
So that was my military experience. So let's um, find out about their experiences. Come on, Adam and Jarrett, grab your drinks, girls. Let's have a chat. Yay, welcome Adam and Jarrett to happy hour. <laughs> Cheers. 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 To wonderful guests. Wonderful guests. Mm -hmm. And Fleet happy week. Fleet Week. <laughs> Same to you. Fleet Week. So before we get too far into it, I want to dial back a little bit. About three years ago, uh, Pride 2011, when we first met this one. Uh -oh. Do you remember Pink Saturday <laughs> 2011? Vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> I know this it was may there. have been a little tipsy. <laughs> Do you remember meeting Jared around mm, that time? Fuzzy. It's fuzzy. <laughs> okay. There may have been so, alcohol involved. A little. Just a pig. But the it was your first pride, so you're totally allowed. Exactly. Your first San Francisco pride. So um, I remember walking into this party at the house that you now live in and finding these two, and I don't remember how it all started, arguing about who was the best branch of the military. <laughs> oh. Now it's coming back. Now, is this coming back to you now? Vaguely, yes. I don't know how long that argument went on, but I really thought you were going to kill each other that night. No. But it was all in fun. Yes. It was all in fun. But I, what I loved about it, I mean, not only was it absolutely hysterical, and although I was worried for your life, because, I mean, look at this guy. Although he could probably hold his own. Probably can, I but I didn't know. know you. I didn't know. You just look so young and helpless. <laughs> Well, so I, I cool. felt like I had to stay there and make sure no one got hurt. But the passion that you both had for your work, do you still love your jobs? Yes, I do. I still Absolutely. love my job. Well, okay. and speaking of the, the slight uh, uh, banter from early on, tell us about what branches of government, uh, branches of the <laughs> <laughs> Branches of the service. What branches of the service are you in? Are you guys in? Uh, I am in the Air Force Reserves. I have been in the Air Force for about uh, 17 and a half years. Wow, that's yeah. a long time. And how about that's you? A career. Uh, I'm active duty, you know, much better than reserve. Mm. Uh, oh, they're going to Wouldn't, go. wouldn't yeah. quite go that far. <laughs> I'm in the Coast Guard. Uh, I've been in about six years. Six years. That's also amazing. a good long time. And so then you both would have been really young initially. Yes. Is that, I, is that accurate? I was 19 when I joined. Like Adam yeah. I was 20. You were huh? 20? That's great. And what what part of the work do you do? You are actually out on the bay a lot of the time. Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, I do law enforcement, port security, and uh, search and rescue. That's what you oh. currently do. Yes. I'm learning some Keeping the base, <laughs> my friends. Fantastic. Yeah. And you, what is your mission there? Um, I am a C5 loadmaster. So I. With heavy things? Uh, I fly <laughs> on the largest airplane in the military fleet to make sure it's mathematically balanced for takeoff and landing. So I would imagine awesome. that you were not out 17 and a half years ago or four and a half. Years yeah. Ago. No, I was not out. I was actually dating my junior high school sweetheart, and oh. we got married when I was 21, and then got divorced when I was 23. Oh, so you were married to a woman for two years. Yeah, pretty much. And you ha did you have an idea at the time that you were gay? Because you you only date men now. Yes, only date men now. Um, I knew that I needed to do something that made me socially okay. Is what where I grew up in upstate New York. Okay. So I did the motions of getting married and everything else mm -hmm. and then realized that I needed to act on the feelings that I've always had since I was a little kid. Well, let's talk about that though. When you when you say you need to do something that made you socially okay or fit in, I'm assuming is what you're saying. Yeah. The military was part of that as well. That was my exit strategy out of living in upstate New York. So okay. I joined the military to leave that life to go and start a new one in the military. To make a career out of yeah. that. And then the wife was part of that package? Yes. Okay. But you knew you were gay. Well, um, did she know you were gay? No, well, I didn't, I wasn't out to myself. Oh, so okay. yeah, it took a while for me to come out to myself. So. To accept it. Yeah. yeah, that's hard. And are you friends with her now? No, no, okay. no not at all. No, not at all. <laughs> Don't you have a similar story? Uh, a little similar. Um, let's see, I was, I was dating my high school sweetheart. Also, we got married because growing up in Alabama, that's what you do. I joined the military though, uh, just much like Adam, to get out of where I lived. I moved to uh, Virginia, that was my first unit. But uh, coming to terms with myself at the time was uh, fraught with peril, to say the least. Um, <laughs> she didn't live with me for the first year, and I lived in another small town in Virginia and uh, kind of went through a depression and would 
you know, polish off a bottle of tequila at night by myself, and you know, just generally not just place. just not like myself. Yeah, yeah. and then and he, I convinced myself at the time that she would. It was just because she wasn't with me, and I just missed her. You know, and that was certainly not the case. And when she finally did live with me, I think we were together for four months after that, and I couldn't do it anymore. Came out to her. Came out to my family. Came out to on Facebook. I lost a lot of friends, you know, but okay. now I live here. Yeah. And, and you have a lot of friends now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually remember 1993. I don't know, were you born? Barely, <laughs> barely, barely. And I'm referencing 1993 because that's, of course, when Bill Clinton enacted the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy for the military. And I remember having a lot of feelings about it at the time. And, I'm, and that's probably, or not probably, but except for the last three years, that would have been the majority of time that you served in the military. Yes. So what was that like? Yeah. Um, it was alter ego is basically how I can explain it. Is I was one person at work and one person in my personal life. And it was... Hard. Yeah. I, I got so used to it, it wasn't hard after a while. So I'd have my friend Jen, my best friend, she'd call me when I'd be at work and she'd be like, you're at work, aren't you? I'm like, yes, I am. She goes, call me when you can be gay, Adam. I don't like straight Adam. He's, really? he's an asshole. <laughs> was it strict? I mean, did you really have to be very cautious at work about what you talked about? Um, yeah, because a lot of people that I knew that were also gay that were in like the subculture in the military, um, a lot of them got kicked out of the military. Wow. Yeah. I mean, of course, I'm because surprised. they mentioned it because it just it was all about just uh, keep it serious on the DL. Yeah, right? yeah, everything was on the DL, and if it was, um, some people got turned in by other people finding so you out or seeing them you out. Reported. Yeah. Well, and then for you as well, right? So that would have been your first two years? Uh, yeah. First three years? First three. Years? First three. First three. three. What was that like for you? Um, well, th there was a lot of uh, non-gender specific verbiage. Like, what do you like, mean? So I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't tell people oh, about no, who no. I was going out with or what I was doing. It was more of, oh, well, you know, my friends and I and this person I'm seeing. It wasn't my, my partner or my boyfriend. And you didn't feel like you needed to present this guy is that you had a girlfriend? Um, well, no. you did for I a did. while. I did, I did for a while, actually. <laughs> that older woman. That, that older woman. Your beard, isn't that what? Yes, yes, yes. I, yeah. I, I had a beard when I got to the unit I'm at now. I was uh, dating my partner at the time, and he is an older man. He's uh, 41. <laughs> and, um, Just a little older. Than, and he looks amazing. He does look amazing. He looks amazing. <laughs> He's holding up by Um <laughs> And uh, so I actually fabricated the story after I met Cameron <laughs> that I was dating an older woman oh, Cameron and was Cameron guy. was my beard. Yeah. <laughs> Cameron was my beard. And I didn't even know it. She first. was my beard for about a year. <laughs> Wait, a did you year? have a picture of her on your desk? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have desks. We do work. We're not the you're Air Force. Out, you're out saving the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you showed yeah. the pictures of me on your phone. I did. I did. I pulled up her Facebook and was like, this is her. And yeah. Yeah. You know, it went well for a year. And did you lie? Did you. Um, I'll, sometimes I would, but I normally just didn't talk about my personal yeah. life is basically what would happen. Yeah. So do you feel like the overall, um, the overall feeling now in the military is more accepting because of a change in policy, or do you feel like it has yet to sort of trickle through? Uh, we still have some time before it, it will be, that good old boys club mentality will be gone. How about with your the, the Coast Guard's a little different. We're much smaller than every other branch. You know, yeah. We have 39,000 total in the entire Coast Guard. And uh, actually, the best thing that I've seen come out of it is these individuals that have never been around gays. Like, most of the people I work with have told me, you're the first gay guy I've ever really been in any close yeah. contact with. I I was going to say I thought that deserved a toast. <laughs> yeah. You're the first. Yeah, cheers. That's, that's, that's powerful. That's and the they answer. and they like you. I mean, we've oh, yes. met some yes. of your straight friends, yes. and yes. you brought them over yeah. for cheers. parties and stuff, and they seem really nice. Oh yeah, absolutely. And now they're comfortable with like the whole yes. crowd. Like, so cheers to that. Cheers to that. <laughs> to acceptance. So Jared, you were talking a little bit about people making the comment to you that you were the first um, gay man or gay person that they knew. Um, tell, us, tell us a little bit more about that. So the guy that actually has the most questions is probably the guy who is very much into religion. Because 
you know, his whole life he was raised to believe, and he's told me this, that he was raised to believe that being gay is an abomination and, you know, it's not acceptable. And he's very almost confused on the situation because he's like, I really like you, you're a good friend. I can't, like, disown you the way I've been taught to. And so... You know, but that's I. Huge. That's huge. Yeah, that absolutely, huge. and you know, it's all thanks to "Don't Ask, Don't Tell" being repealed. Yeah. You know, because I never would have been out in the military. Right. If, and you couldn't even have those conversations because exactly. you would have been like legally obligated to report you or something. Exactly. Like that, right? Pretty much. So. But you know, we talk a lot about on the show about making a difference, um, one person at a time, one group at a time, and you are. I you mean, are. both of you are. Yeah. I mean, very much so. Do you have similar stories of? Any of the people that I come out to now, it's not a big deal. Like, there's no, like, big story or anything behind it. So they're just like, oh, okay, you're still Adam. That's basically it. But most of the people that I've worked with, I've worked with for over 10 years. So yeah, that's huge. Yeah. About coming out, though, like, as a whole, have you had any experiences with coming out that were either super positive and awesome or, like, ooh, that did not go well? Like, what was the biggest one that sticks out in your mind? But military or personally? Um, one of my coworkers that is now temporarily over at the active duty, um, we went to Thailand and had a lot of crazy fun in Pattaya Beach, Thailand with a group of guys, and that was back when I was playing straight. And so, basically, at that time, I was out, but just not at work. And then maybe, like, two years later, I came out, and he's... He was just like, why the hell did you not tell me then? I was like, because I wanted to sleep with the crew chief and that would have been inappropriate. <laughs> and he's all like, we would have had so much more fun. I was like, we already had more than enough fun. I was broken for three days. And so. he's, and he's straight. Yeah. Oh, but that's cool. So he's yeah. super open minded. Good, good yeah. yeah, okay. I love that. That's good. <laughs> And you? Anything well, super positive, super negative? <laughs> so oh, my, right my coming out story. <laughs> what, um, what was the date? I, I, heard, I heard a rumor. Uh, I heard a rumor. It was uh, <laughs> April Fool's Day, April 1st. I had to call my parents and tell them. Well, <laughs> I, call, <laughs> I call my mom and I'm talking to her. And I, I'm like, Mom, I need you to sit down for me. And she's like, I was like, are you sitting? She's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, she's like, I'm doing some work, whatever. I said, well, I really want you to sit down. I have something to tell you. And she's like, just tell me what it is. And I'm like, well, mom, I'm gay. And she's like, oh, I think I need to sit down. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's what I just told you to do. <laughs> and then we're talking, and all of a sudden she's like, wait a second, it's, it's April Fool's Day, you know? Oh, really? She's like, are you kidding me? You're no, no, it's April Fool's Day. Uh -huh. And I go, no, no, seriously, no, I, I am. I'm absolutely, 100%. She's like, I still don't believe you. Oh, no. <laughs> and then she's That's like, terrible. I said, you know, I was terrified of her telling my dad. And she's like, well, I'm going to tell your dad. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, Did no. she still think it was a joke? No, she, okay. it took about five, ten minutes. And then she's like, okay, all right, I believe you. You wouldn't be fighting this hard. And I said, because I eventually told her, I said, if, if you don't believe me, I said, in a week when Jessica gets home and tells you, you'll believe me. You so she's like, okay, I believe you. And I'm like, just don't tell dad. She's like, well, I'm going to go tell your dad right now. And I'm like, no, tell dad. And she tells dad. And that's where it took kind of a negative turn, you know. Uh, he he kind of was like, don't do anything, you know, rash. He, he said, I think you've been with Jessica for too long and there's something wrong inside your head. He's like, so don't sleep with anybody, don't do anything gay. He's like, just continue not doing anything and we'll figure this out. Yeah. What and did he mean by figure it out? Did he want to like, continue to, to like... He, want, he wanted me to... Be straight. Be straight, basically. And and in result, we didn't speak for about three years. Oh, that's, that's, sad. that's sad. But on the upside, we've reconnected since. Yeah, okay. So we've talked a lot about coming out in the military and being um, gay, openly gay in the military. I'm wondering if you feel like there's a distinction uh, for women or lesbians in the military, and if you know any and what their experience may have been like. So uh, the ones that I know in the military is completely different experience because, um, uh, yes, from men because it was more acceptable because of the good old good old boys club that was in place already that they thought it was some kind of a turn on if the woman was also into women so. 
but if a guy being into a guy, that's not okay. So their experiences were much easier than my experience. Because they were sexualized? Pretty much, yes. Oh, dear. And then... Um, <laughs> you talked about it I was really else. hoping you'd say that they were harder workers or something, but no, mm, it was sexually. Well, just the way that they, the men sexualize the women in general, just the way that they view them yeah. and the acts that they're doing with another Two woman together, type right? of situation. So, <laughs> yes. So the good old boys club. But then um, the women that look that are very manly are like kind of butch. So that are out of their gender norm, uh, performative gender normative yeah. performance, I think is what it's called. <laughs> yeah, Let's say, sorry, my school is getting to me. Yeah, um, and so basically they had a hard time and a lot of those women would get kicked out oh. because of their gender uh, display that they get. And they were more everyone. easily identif identified, is that what you're saying? Yeah. By their physical appearance? Yeah. But right. yeah, you would have to have been, and I'm asking because I don't know, you would have had to have been caught in a relationship with someone or having, I don't even know if I know the criteria for kicking one out of the military during the national time. So it was basically if you're even under suspicion of yeah. being homosexual that you can get kicked out. What would you say has been the best part of your military experience? The best part of my military experience? Probably the fact that I've seen the world with my job. Um, and also my education has been paid for by the military. That, that was I, it. <laughs> I, I'm still in shock about 17 and a half years. Yeah. Although you're probably sometimes in shock. <laughs> I, I'm counting down until I'm out. Two years to go, right? <laughs> yes. And Jared, best part of your military experience? It got me out of the place I lived in. You know, I'm, I live in the greatest city, in my opinion, in the United States. And I'm happy now. If you were talking to someone who was younger and they were thinking about going into the military and they were LGBT, um, would you have any advice for them? Um, if you know anybody that is in the community that's already in the military, seek advice from them before signing anything or going into the military because the recruiters will lie to you. So if you want the honest truth, talk to someone that's been in for a while. How about you? Um, for me, as far as the Coast Guard, my advice would be don't be scared. You know, don't ever be scared to, you know, there are policies in place now to protect the LGBT community in the military. You know, don't be scared to be you in the military. That's probably my biggest regret is when I first moved, came to my unit, I wasn't out. And everybody's going to like you as long as you're you and you work hard. And that you're confident and you're... Of course. And you're sure, self-assured, is that kind of what you're saying? Yes, yes, yes. There's no reason to be insecure and hide yourself and you know, cut yourself off. Just, you know, I would never, if I were to do it all over again and have to join the military tomorrow, um, I would do it in a heartbeat. And I would, I would, you know, do it proudly and loudly. <laughs> Loud and proud <laughs> in the Coast Guard. <laughs> no, and I, and I hope that you guys are thanked often for your service. I know that, I know how much gratitude I feel. Yeah, I, I definitely am grateful. I'm grateful to you being in active and you and being the reserves. And thank you very much for all you veterans out there. My dad is a veteran of the Navy. Some of our friends are veterans as well. Uh, Joseph was supposed to be here today on the uh, Navy veteran and is actually in the VA right now. Hope you're feeling better, baby. And um, so thank you you're so welcome. much for coming. Yeah, you so you're much. welcome. Appreciate you're it. welcome. Nice candor and honesty and willingness to open up. We always appreciate that here at Happy Hour. And so are our audience. Really yeah, yeah. Thank you so well, thank you, thank you for thank having you. us on here. <laughs> exactly, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Cheers, Thanks to the crew, thank you to their audience, and everybody on YouTube. Thank you to look out for another amazing day here. And have a wonderful Veterans Day and the rest of the week. <laughs> Cheers. 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 For more about Happy Hour with Cameron Steele, upcoming episodes and events, please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.
For more stories and news about the LGBT community, go check out G News and Glitter Bomb TV, both hosted by Celso Delay. And for even more, check out It's Everything with BB Sweetbriar and The Sex Talk with Mo and Genoa. Got the words to say, yeah.